When setting behavioural goals, you have to be really clear what you actually want the target audience to do or not do. And you have to make sure that this is actually realistic. It's achievable. With Road Crew, having a clear and achievable behavioural goal help them remain focused. Woke up early this morning. Love me now. I got out my bed early this morning. Wisconsin uh, is known in the United States as one of the states that has the most alcohol consumption problems. And one area specifically of problem is drunk driving. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation is always trying to reduce alcohol impaired driving and each year they have a budget and they spend it primarily on advertising and they try to get laws changed and that doesn't do any good and they learned over the years that uh, between their advertising and the laws not much is happening. And they were wondering what to do and somebody said well why don't you try social marketing and uh, they said what's that and their uh, colleague said well I'll call Rothschild he'll tell you. And so they did, and they came over to my office, and we talked for about a half an hour, and they said, yes, that's what we want to do. The behavioral goals were set by the funding agencies. One goal was to reduce alcohol-related crashes by 5% in the communities that we were working in, and two, that the communities should be self-sufficient and be able to financially support the programs on their own by the end of the first year. I think it's incredibly important to have very specific behavioral goals. Uh, without goals, you meander all over the place. Uh, without goals, any strategy will do the job. We, we also knew that we were in a very competitive situation. And in that competitive situation, there was a brand that was selling really well. And the brand is, I can drive myself home no matter how drunk I am. And we needed to take market share away from that brand. And to do that, we needed to come up with a better brand. So we needed to understand the relationship between the customer and the competitive brand, we needed to know what benefits we could offer that would make us more appealing. We needed to know the barriers that would keep them from using our brand. We did a number of focus groups sitting in the back of bars talking to guys, thinking that what we were going to do is to develop the best possible ride home that anybody had ever come up with. And they said, you know, that's not going to work. At one o'clock in the morning, we make really bad decisions. We're really stupid. If you want us to ride home with you, why don't you give us a ride to the bar? And so we said, wow, what a great idea. We'll get some old school buses and we'll drive you around all night. And they said, no. One of the few things we have any pride in is our vehicles. If you want us to ride with you, your vehicle's gonna have to be at least as nice as ours. We smoke in our vehicles, so you're gonna have to let us smoke. And we drink while we're driving, so you're gonna have to let us drink in your vehicle as well. And so that was really the key insights that drove it. Once we had that, we had to totally change what it is that we wanted to do, uh, and, and it led us down the road to success. The way the intervention developed was that we went into our communities and we developed local coalitions to manage the programs, and each coalition was asked to have an advisory board. And the advisory board was uh, consisted of guys who were 21 to 34 who drink and drive, who nobody would ever talk to, but we forced the coalition of community leaders to talk to them so that everything they tried to do would actually, might have a chance of working. The first community to figure out what to do decided they would use limousines. And so they went to Las Vegas and they bought some used limousines at auction and brought them into town. So they would pick you up at home, take you to a bar, drive you between bars, drive you home again at the end of the night for $20. The project itself was supposed to be financially self-sufficient. and. It was not totally self-sufficient from fares. And so in some communities, it was decided that the bar owner should kick in. And some of the bar owners were reluctant to do this. And so the leaders said, well, it's okay. If you don't want to join us, that's okay. But the limos will only stop at bars where owners have kicked in their money. We were asked to reduce drunk driving by 5% in, within a year in the communities we were in. Actually, what happened is we reduced crashes by 17%. 
Over the five years that I was involved in the project, uh, we're up close to 100,000 rides. Uh, we think that we avoided about 150 crashes and we avoided half a dozen deaths. We don't know who they are, but we think there's some more people alive because of this. I believe that almost everybody does almost everything out of self-interest. And if we're trying to manage behaviors, what we need to do is understand that self-interest and accommodate it. People have often asked me, why didn't we try to reduce drinking? Because we understood our target market, we knew that they would walk away if we asked them to drink less. They were very willing to listen to how they could drink as much as they had, and we would give them rides home. But if we had asked them to drink less, they would have walked away. People wanted to ride in limos. It was a really cool way to get around during the evening, and that's why we succeeded. We accommodated self-interest. Hey, just head left. You know I was wrong, man. <laughs>